The big six, or hexagonal, are six personality traits. Extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotionality, or neuroticism, as it's also known as, openness to exploration, and honesty and humility. The hexagon model seems to be a far better personality model than the big five. It's because it has a 0.5 correlation to dark tetrad personality, just through honesty and humility alone. From a managerial and relationship perspective, this model is a far better than the big five model. I have used this model to identify dark tetra personality types in my workplace in both women and men. That gave me the advantage to expect certain behaviors depending on situation. It helped me understand which individuals to trust more and why. In later videos, I will give you more insight in what you can expect from narcissists and other dark tetra personality behaviors. But let's start digging into the different personality traits. Extroversion. Extroversion is best described as how engaged you, you are with the external world. Extroverts enjoy being with people. They are high in energy and often experience, experience positive emotions. They tend to be enthusiastic, action-oriented, individuals who are likely to say yes or let's go to opportunities for excitement. In groups, they like to talk, assert themselves, and draw attention to themselves. The opposite side of extroversion is introversion, and the lack of energy and activity levels of an extrovert. They tend to be quiet, low-key, deliberate, and disengaged from the social world. The introvert needs less stimulation than an extroverted individual, and prefers to be alone. You should not interpret them as being ashamed or depressed. Sometimes you can interpret introverts as not friendly or even arrogant, but that would be completely wrong. Agreeableness. Agreeableness reflects uh, individuals' differences in concern with cooperation and social harmony. Agreeable individuals value getting along with others. They are considerate, friendly, generous and helpful and willing to compromise their own interests with others. Agreeable people also have an optimistic view of human nature. They believe people are honest and decent and trustworthy. On the opposite side of agreeableness is disagreeable individuals. They place self-interest above getting along with others. They are generally unconcerned with others' well-being and they are unlikely to extend themselves for other people. Their skepticism about others' motives causes them to be suspicious and uncooperative. Agreeableness is helpful for attaining and maintaining popularity. Agreeable people are better liked than disagreeable people. But disagreeable people are in some situations that need tough or absolute decisions better suited. Disagreeable people can also make excellent scientists, critics, or soldiers. Conscientiousness. Conscientiousness concerns the way in which we control, regulate, and direct our impulses. Sometimes acting on impulse is good if there is a time constraint for fast decisions. Also, in time of play rather than work, acting spontaneously and impulsively can also be fun. Impulsive individuals might be seen as colorful, fun to be with and zany by others. Nonetheless, acting on impulse can lead to trouble in a numerous of ways. Some impulses are antisocial. Uncontrolled antisocial acts harm other members of society, but they also result in retribution towards the perpetrator. They also often produce immediate reward, but with undesirable long-term consequences. One example includes excessive socializing that leads to being fired from one's job, or hurling an insult that causes the breakup of an important relationship, or using pleasure-inducing drugs that destroys one's health. Impulsive behaviors diminishes a person's effectiveness in significant ways. Even when not destructive, 
acting impulsively disallows contemplating alternative courses of action, some of which would have been wiser than the impulsive choice. Impulsivity also sidetracks people during projects when they need to be organized. The accomplishments of an impulsive person are small, scattered, and inconsistent. Intelligence is the ability to think about future consequences before acting on impulse. Intelligent activity involves contemplation of long-range goals as well as organizing and planning routes to these goals and also persisting towards one's goals in the face of short-lived impulses. The idea that intelligence involves impulse control is captured by the term prudence, an alternative label for the conscientiousness domain. Prudent means both wise and cautious. Conscientious people are often perceived as intelligent. The benefit of high conscientiousness are obvious. Conscientious individuals avoid trouble and achieve high level of success. They do that through purposefully planning and being persistent. They're also regarded by others as intelligent and reliable. On the negative side, they can be compulsive perfectionists and workaholics. Very conscientious individuals might be seen as stuffy and boring. Unconscientious people might be seen as having lack of ambition or failure to stay within the lines. But they will experience many short-lived pleasures and they will never be called stuffy, that's for sure. Emotionality or neuroticism. Freud used the term neurosis to describe this condition. He said it was marked by mental distress or emotional suffering, but also to cope with normal demands of life. He suggested that everyone shows some sign of neurosis, but that we differ in our degree of suffering. Today, neuroticism refers to the tendency to experience negative feelings. It also refers to as the pain circuit. Those high in neuroticism may experience one specific negative feeling, such as anxiety, anger, sadness, vulnerability, or depression, but are likely to experience several of these emotions. And I will speak more in depth about those feelings in the next video. People high in eroticism or emotionality are reactive. They respond emotionally to events that would not affect most people. Their reactions tend to be more intense than normal. They are more likely to interpret ordinary situations as threatening and minor frustrations as difficult. Their negative emotional reactions tend to persist for longer periods of time, which means they're often in a bad mood. Difficulty regulating the emotionality can reduce an erotic's ability to think or make decisions or cope with stress. We discussed this in the previous video about how to understand feelings and emotions, and I will add it to the end of this video for those of you that want to go and watch it for educational purposes to understand how emotions are integrated more into uh, the personality traits. At the other end of the scale, individuals who score low in neuroticism are less upset. They're also less reactive. They tend to be calm, stable, and free from persistent negative feelings. If you do not have a lot of negative feelings, it does not mean that you experience a lot of positive feelings. Positive emotions is a component of the extroversion domain, so do not mix them up. Openness to exploration. Openness to exploration describes a dimension of cognitive style. It distinguishes imaginative, creative people from down-to-earth and conventional people. Open people are intellectually curious, appreciative of arts, and sensitive to beauty. They tend to be, compared to closed people, more aware of their feelings and tend to think and act in individualistic and non-conforming ways. Intellectuals usually score high on openness to exploration. Openness to exploration has also been called culture or intellect. Nonetheless, intellect is best regarded as one aspect of openness to exploration. IQ in years of education usually follows the level of openness to exploration, but they are only minor correlated. People high in openness to exploration have an open cognitive style. It facilitates for 
thinking in symbols, abstractions removed from concrete experiences, high in openness to exploration can think conceptually. That is the opposite of flat earthers. They can do that without ever having seen it in real life. This symbolic cognition may take the form of mathematical, logical or geometrical thinking. Imagine IQ tests with shapes and patterns, but also artistic and metaphorical use of language, music, composition or performance, or one of the many visual or performing arts. People low in openness to exploration tend to have narrow common interests. They prefer plain, straightforward and obvious over the complex, ambiguous and subtle. They may regard the arts and sciences with suspicion and they think of these as abstruse or of no practical use. Again, Flat Earthers is a good example of that. Closed people prefer familiarity and novelty. They are conservative and resistant to change. Openness is often presented as healthier, more mature by psychologists. They are often themselves high in openness to exploration, but open and closed style of thinking are useful in different environments. The intellectual style of the open person may serve a professor well, but research has shown that closed thinking is related to superior job performance in jobs such as police work, sales, and many service occupations. Honesty and humility. It is comprised of sincerity, fairness, greed, avoidance, and modesty. This personality trait is the key trait to determine if a person is a psychopath, Machiavellian, narcissist, and sadist. Their common name in psychology is dark tetrad personality, which you will hear me say more times in the future episodes. Sincerity is assessed at what level you will be genuine in interpersonal relations. If you're low in sincerity, you will flatter others and pretend you like them. You will do that to get favors, just like a narcissist. But if you're high in sincerity, you will not want to manipulate others. Fairness assesses the tendency to avoid fraud and corruption. If you're low in fairness, you will be will willing to gain by cheating and stealing, just like a psychopath, Machiavellian and a narcissist. But if you're high in fairness, you will not want to take advantage of other individuals or of society at large. Greed avoidance assesses your tendency to be uninterested in possessing lavish wealth and luxury goods and signs of high social status. If you're low in greed avoidance, then you will want to enjoy and to display your wealth and privileges, just like a narcissist, psychopath and Machiavellian. But if you're high in greed avoidance, you will not be especially motivated by monetary or social status considerations. Modesty assesses your tendency to be modest and unassuming. If you're low in modesty, you will consider yourself being superior and as entitled to privileges that others do not have just like a narcissist and psychopath. If you're high in modesty, you will see yourself as an ordinary person without claiming you need special treatment. This one should be obvious to spot in today's society where people compete in being victims, usually vulnerable narcissists. Environment have some influence on personality, but there is no perfect consensus among researchers. The environmental factors that have most impact on personality are the following. Family, culture, peers, relationships, and trauma. The least important factors are weather, birth order, geography, climate, and shared environment. To understand personality even better, watch the next video where I explain the six facets of each personality trait even deeper. After the next video, you should be able to do the big five or the hexaco test on me and be close to the truth. You can do it already now and post your results on me in the chat. You see, everyone's personality is the emperor's new clothes if you open your eyes. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the more explanatory video about personality up next.